So, we were talking about the notion of surrender. Now, uh, Nishkam Karma uh, talks about renunciation in action, that is it does not uh, uh, count on uh, uh, an attachment with uh, the fruit of the action. So, what is uh, detached action? Detached action is action without any uh, att attachment with the fruits of the action. Now, uh, we will talk about this notion of surrender, uh, within a few minutes, that what does it signify and what are the consequences of it. But before that, let us also a quick uh, look at what Nishkam Karma is. Now, if you look at the screen, Nishkam Karma as a morally neutral concept, meaning it is almost amoral. That when we talk about Nishkam Karma, we do not uh, classify actions of Nishkam Karma as uh, moral or amoral. What we are talking about is a morally neutral action, or action that does not have any moral component. So, you, what you would like to appreciate or imagine is that, well, uh, we find uh, uh, most of, uh, for the Indian philosophical thinking, uh, morality is not a final uh, destination, liberation is or moksha is. So, considering that morality or the domain of right and wrong is given a uh, 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 status of a uh, scaffolding or a ladder that allows you to reach the higher plane. Uh, contrast this with the uh, western philosophical thinking, where morality is uh, uh, very often taken as the uh, very objective of uh, living and life, uh, having nothing beyond it or it uh, being uh, an essential and objective part of life. In fact, this goes on uh, to uh, it, it has very frequently been critiqued by western uh, philosophers, that Indian system of thinking does not have uh, any uh, uh, ethical thinking at all. That is perhaps one of the reasons, why this takes place is because, we find that uh, things are uh, uh, not clear, that the Indian way of thinking is the final uh, 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 frontier is not confined to morality or moral thinking. So, uh, Nishkam Karma as a morally neutral concept is that, well there is no uh, uh, moral uh, uh, component to these actions, which em em emanate out of Nishkam Karma. So, it is, uh, uh, it, it is postulating a transcendental level, a level on which actions are no more uh, right and wrong. Uh, they are bereft of any moral classifications, or even though uh, at, a, at a, the same action at a, uh, uh, a level of non-transcendence would have been uh, carrying a moral uh, uh, component. Now, uh, uh, what kind of action does this Nishkam Karma talk about? Now, if you look at the slide, when we talk about Nishkam Karma, uh, the closest alternative we can talk about uh, or comparison we can do is with Emmanuel Kant, who talks about duty for uh, duty's sake. That when he talks about the categorical imperative, and he talks about uh, the sense of duty that emerges, that well, uh, there is no other motivation for duty, except that it is your duty. Now, this is a kind of motivation that is well very often seen with the, with the armed forces that were uh, or uh, services where duty is considered supreme that the uh, what one's duty is automatically makes it an ought that uh, duty incorporates the notion of ought which you may like to take a look that well duty incorporates the notion of ought. So, this kind of a duty for duty's sake, is also compared with Nishkam Karma, because uh, very often uh, the Hindu ethics is criticized as being uh, 
uh, almost like a, the, uh, particularly the law of karma as being a retributive law that where every uh, moral act gets you a desert and it is that way almost a heartless inconsiderate uh, cold calculative equation. And therefore, when one starts earning uh, moral desert is earning with a uh, uh, with a aim or with a goal of a uh, uh, of liberation. So, there it is not being uh, it, it, it is not uh, being uh, it is not able to represent the entire uh, plethora of uh, uh, the moral life that human beings have. It is becoming almost a simple uh, transactionary deal that well, where I keep on accumulating moral desert for my own benefit later. But here look at it, when we talk about Nishkam Karma, where the law of karma is transcended, where this karma or these actions, where essentially these are all questions of moral agency, that uh, what makes an agent uh, uh, righteous or uh, better off. So, Nishkam Karma on the other hand then is trying to uh, uh, postulate uh, a transcendental level, where uh, righteousness uh, uh, is a part of na uh, second nature, and there is no uh, moral, uh, there are no uh, des moral deserts that accumulate with actions done out of Nishkam Karma. So, it is a morally neutral concept, it is almost transcending what is the moral plane. So, uh, uh, the closest comparison with this as we mentioned would be with Immanuel Kant's duty for duty's sake or rigorism. We see elements of uh, uh, people living their daily lives, where uh, when one commits oneself to uh, an act or a, a, a takes up a duty, confirming to the duty becomes the only motive, whether that uh, whatever that duty be. So, uh, a kind of uh, uh, glorification uh, in, in uh, uh, folklore is made out of this kind of a commitment to duty. So, this is uh, kind of Nishkam Karma's sense of duty. So, we talk about duty for duty's sake as uh, uh, a close comparison to Nishkam Karma. Now, let us look at some exceptions that, uh, suppose we say well, uh, can wicked acts or can evil acts emanate from Nishkama Karma. Uh, I write them, uh, write, write it N K for short, that can evil acts. Uh, uh, or wicked acts uh, emanate from Nishkam Karma, or uh, is the structure of Nishkam Karma such that evil acts are ruled out? Well, of course, the answer to the first question is no, yeah, your wicked acts cannot emanate from Nishkama Karma. And uh, is the structure of Nishkama Karma uh, such that evil acts are ruled out? Of course, the answer is yes. Let us look at a justification, how is this possible. Now, uh, uh, if uh, let us imagine evil acts or wicked acts, the moment we uh, uh, strip the moral component from actions we tend to think amoral acts as almost psychopathic acts or trivial acts. How can acts, which are uh, moral at one level, uh, be free of moral component at another level? Well, the answer to this uh, brings uh, uh, forth a little talk about agency, and about uh, the consequences of Nishkama Karma, or what kind of a person follows Nishkama Karma. Now, Nishkama Karma are not sporadic acts of agents, they are uh, uh, ontological status of agents. So, it is not that uh, uh, I have do certain acts, uh, uh, which can recur to uh, Nishkam Karma, and I do certain acts, which do not. In fact, Nishkam Karma is supposed to be a state of existence of the agent, from which naturally Nishkam Karma or kind of acts flow out. So, it is a ontological status of moral agent. It is an ontological status of moral agents. Okay. 
can wicked or evil acts emanate from nishkam karma well answer of course is no but how is it no why is it no that well first when one attains the level where one is not attached to the uh, fruits of one's action one has transcended one's perspective uh, when we talked about moral agency moral agency uh, uh, confines us or any, any agency confines us to one particular perspective now the moment we transcend our perspective or we reach an ontological status where we are uh, uh, indifferent to our perspective it almost brings in a god's eyes uh, view of the world uh, let's look at an example perhaps that would make this clear uh, let's say i have uh, 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 some money in my hand uh, which i uh, do not require of anything immediately. Now, I see that I, in a shop, there is a watch that I like. I see a, a, a beggar standing outside, uh, uh, expecting alms. And I see, uh, 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 in the news, that there has been an earthquake somewhere, and uh, uh, funds are being sought for the same. And on the other hand, I see that, well, there is a uh, advertisement. Uh, uh, on a billboard, uh, uh, promising me a fantastic rate of return on the deposit that I make. Now, considering currency or money as a reservoir of resource, where would I like this reservoir of resource to be unloaded? Now, considering, see, uh, essentially, what uh, are uh, uh, lesser morally appreciable acts are uh, acts which confine us to our perspective, and blind us to the perspective of others. Perhaps, if you do most of an analysis of our judgement of uh, right and wrong, uh, being selfish is considered uh, uh, wrong or bad, and being selfless is considered good. What is it, when we mean by being selfless? It is that, well, we have transcended our perspective. Now, for me, I need the watch, because it looks good. I see that, if I invest in my, uh, in the uh, 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 bank deposit advertised, I will be able to get two watches in, uh, buy two watches, or maybe a, uh, a grander watch in, uh, say, two years or three years of time. Once my investment earns its return, I see the beggar asking for arms there, and I uh, distribute, uh, uh, I give the money there thereby uh, feeding him for the day, or drawing satisfaction of uh, giving something to the needy, or I, uh, lend, I, I put in the money to the earthquake victims, when considering that, well, this money will immediately, or this resource will immediately be useful to people who need it the most. The beggar could perhaps get an arms from somebody else, or could in any case survive over the day. Now, when we take a decision transcending our perspective, according to uh, Nishkam Karma, is when we have transcended our perspective, that this boundary of agency, uh, uh, which gives us the perspective, is diminished. Once that is done, we find that, the acts that flow out of a diminished uh, sense of uh, uh, bounded agency, or uh, acts that flow out of a, uh, a, a, a wider array of perspectives, tend to be, uh, acts that go along well. Now, uh, we see that, uh, when we continue with uh, uh, Nishkam Karma, or when we act out of Nishkam Karma. So, uh, what uh, arguing in favour of Nishkam Karma, or how they would reply, is that the structure of uh, transcendental perspective is such, that we do not have. Uh, a scope for uh, getting into a, a, a selfish or a wicked situation. So, a, most of the evil acts can be, or wicked acts can be understood as a limited perspective problem. Whereas, uh, Nishkam Karma, on the other hand, uh, ask, uh, suggests for uh, claims that once we have dropped our perspectives, it really doesn't. Uh, only good acts, or what would be qualified as good acts, by third person perspective, can be seen. And uh, nothing 
uh, wicked flows out of it. So, uh, yes, the ontological acts, if you see, uh, ontological status of moral agents is on uh, is a different ontological status, and therefore there can be no evil acts that emanate from nishkam karma, and therefore the structure uh, that we uh, of the nishkam karma rules out such kind of an evil act. So, there can be no amoral psychopath as many of us would imagine, uh, somebody which who is uh, no amoral psychopaths, because this is not a pre uh, moral thinking situation, rather a transcended moral thinking situation. Now, looking at what can be um, the consequences or what can be the consequences of Nishkama Karma. Well, let me list out the consequences that uh, there are many more consequences that you can imagine and take it up as an exercise and uh, write it up. Well, first is the transcendence of outlook or or perspective. First, we talked about transcendence of outlook or perspective, what we are just talking about right now that the status, the ontological status of the Nishkam Karmi is such that, uh, she or he has transcended uh, his or her own perspective, that we are able to uh, uh, imagine uh, a situation that, where uh, what is required, not from my perspective, but from a God's eye's uh, view or something which is. Uh, far above. It is like you are seeing the world order, and you find some missing blocks, and you have, you would like to place those miss, uh, missing blocks. It is not like you would, uh, 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 the placing particular blocks would be to your advantage. Look at it this way, that in fact, any, any uh, uh, semblance of greatness always, or moral greatness always incorporates this factor. Now, uh, Rawls has, uh, John Rawls, a uh, uh, philosopher who has written a book uh, called the theory of justice which has brought forth the notion of justice into heated uh, debates uh, puts forth an uh, interesting thought experiment about something what he calls the original position what is the original position is an uh, thought experiment is an imagination that uh, imagine that you uh, are about to enter a society and you have to design the rules for the society but you don't know which position you would uh, uh, play in the society. You do not know your, the gender that would be assigned to you, you do not know your socio-economic status, you do not know your intelligence, you do not know any of the uh, qualities that you have. And then you design a system that is uh, eventually, wherein you can join. So, what is the, uh, Rawls goes on to explain that we would pr pr perhaps choose uh, these certain principles, which he goes on to states as a theory of justice. But, what uh, uh, is the point of mentioning the original position here, is that I would only choose a fair system, if I do not know what my uh, position in that system be. I would only uh, cut the cake into equal pieces, if I were the last person to uh, get the piece. So, the moment we transcend our perspective, we find a much better, uh, 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 a much more uh, uh, just distribution taking place. Look at a town planner, look at a leader. Now, if a leader uh, uh, or a politician uh, or a planner looks beyond his or her own uh, individual gains, he becomes uh, a visionary. If uh, 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 look at uh, uh, premiers of nations, who look beyond their national uh, gains, become world citizens. So, every time that we transcend our perspective, it uh, takes us a few notches up the moral ladder perhaps. So, Nishram Karma is again comparative to this, that well, it gives us the, uh, gives us an ability to transcend our outlook or perspective. In fact, uh, not that it gives us an ability, that it is uh, a feature of Nishram Karma, who can transcend his uh, uh, outlook or perspective. Now, 
let us look at it, uh, uh, let us uh, contrast this with incentive less action. Now, uh, as we talked about in the beginning of this class, that well Nishkam Karma it seems to be contrary common sense, because it talks about incentive less actions. And whereas, the entire world order is uh, premised on this domain, that we have uh, incentivized actions, that uh, policies are designed to give incentives and uh, disincentives, to keep people from taking the kind of decisions it wants to take. So, uh, incentive less actions, perhaps being in this uh, network of incentives and disincentives, we find that, uh, uh, we uh, perhaps become opaque to a possibility there, where incentives are no more motivations for actions. Uh, in fact, this simple word called uh, seva, that even Gandhi talks about, uh, and is, is a very common uh, notion or service, which is um, take, taken as an under, uh, sense of uh, seva, for those who are familiar with uh, this Hindi term seva, which denotes a kind of service, which is almost selfless, uh, uh, talks about. So, this notion of seva is where uh, there is an absolute incentiveless action, where you have satisfaction of doing the job yourself. But of course, the Nishkam Karmi goes a step ahead, that he does not even uh, claim that there is a satisfaction, that is the goal of uh, uh, any action. Rather, it is uh, just that the act needs to be done, and it is done. So, this does not make it an careless act, it is, it makes it a detached act. So, uh, it, this seems to be an essential interesting lesson, for those all, who are um, talking about incentives, and uh, uh, looking at the whole world order, by uh, understanding incentives, that everything happens through incentives. So, uh, Nishkam Karma is a welcome break, for, for the typical carrot and stick, or uh, dog and bone policy, that seems to be uh, the order of governing human behavior today. Uh, well, Nishkam Karma can be seen, as something which is, we talked about, it is the quality of leaders. So, in fact, we just talked about it, that when leaders come up, or what makes a leader great, and not petty, is when that leader is able to transcend his or her perspective, or his or her electorate, or his, or the people he represent. As long as he represents the people, he has transcended his individual perspective. As long as he transcends, the region that he represents, he has become a, uh, a larger than life leader. He is concerned about what is the right thing to do. It is a typical example, which occurs to me in the Indian scenarios, is when uh, Indian scenario, or political scenario, is when all the chief ministers of the states, bicker for funds, without uh, 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 considering that well, there is a possibility that one state's need may be higher than the other need. need and we need to justify the same. But if one represents uh, uh, stubbornly to uh, the electorate, that has elected uh, the leader, that leader would only be arguing for the welfare of that electorate. So, uh, it is all a tied up notion, when, when we come up with the notion of Vasudeva Kutumbakam, which again stands for that well, the whole universe is my uh, Kutumb, or my community, or my home. So, uh, uh, Mishkam Karma, is tied up with such notions, that where perspective is transferred, and uh, leaders can be leaders only when, or true leaders of uh, uh, people, who can have this kind of a uh, inkling, or a direction towards the Nishkama Karma. And uh, uh, finally, of course, there are many more consequences, that you can yourself think of, and perhaps email me, or write to me. I would be delighted to uh, uh, know, or learn about uh, perspectives, that you are able to take. And of course, it is the source of all psychological happiness. In fact, the entire uh, stress and strain of modern life, can very largely be rooted to a very strong consequentialist uh, strain. That whatever we require to do, or, or uh, whatever we do, needs to uh, deliver goods, deliver results. So, as a result. Uh, human agency becomes totally responsible, from effort to uh, results. And if results are not being yielded, then we are uh, losing out something. So, this causes a lot of stress and strain, because uh, 
no matter how careful or how elaborate you are in your effort, there is still a gap between the effort and action. Perhaps, this is the theistic input of uh, uh, the metaphysical scenario of uh, uh, Nishkam Karma, that where we find uh, the gap between fruits and action is taken as a significant uh, uh, gap. And uh, human agency is uh, uh, critiqued or limited to not being uh, a manufacturer of uh, uh, fruits, but as a component in the attainment of fruits. So, uh, uh, a lot of our stress and strain and psychological unhappiness uh, is done away with, when we have the consolation that there is a, a stage, where uh, actions can be performed without any attachment to its results. Now, every action, just imagine a schooling system or a college system, which does not have grades where you learn for the sake of learning, you do not learn for the sake of grades. So, as long as, uh, uh, it is an obvious, uh, perhaps teachers would be more familiar, and students of course, would be familiar with this, that as long as you see that your, uh, the grades that you get in a course, do not uh, represent the effort, or uh, you have put into it, you seem to be uh, disgruntled, disappointed. And uh, this is a complaint, that many teachers would be facing. But, what was the objective of the course? is for you to give grades, or is it for you to learn something. So, how well you have learnt it, that is your uh, credit that you carry. Perhaps, perhaps this is uh, all too idealistic a notion that we talk about, but then Indian philosophy does arise in a time of idealism, and uh, with uh, backed by an uh, elaborate metaphysical uh, system. But, uh, of course, considering that this as a possibility is itself in a catharsis, and uh, gives one a better uh, uh, frame of mind, and a more peaceful existence uh, around us.